So to review for this third video, we've looked at the pre-conventional morality levels. We've looked at obedience, which is where you're just trying to follow the rules of whoever's watching over you. We've looked at self-interest, where you're just looking at what's in it for me, what is the most beneficial for me to do. Then we moved on to conventional, away from pre-conventional, and we talked about interpersonal morality, where it's just what does everyone else think is the right thing? How do I fit in with my social norms? And we've looked at authority, which is very simply what is the legal thing to do? What does the law tell me that I should do? And we are now getting into level three, which is the post-conventional. We are now above and beyond. We've We've matured past these other things, and now we're looking at post-conventional. We're going, we're going for our own higher purpose here. So level five. Level five is called social contract. Social contract. And this means that if the, the social contract means that if everyone um, had the same morality what would create the best overall uh, the best overall morality, the best overall world for all of us to live in. And that's sort of what the law tries to do. But the law can't take into account every tiny detail of your situation. It can't take into account every situation. So this social contract says, think for yourself. If if there was an overall guiding morality, if the law was perfectly written about every possible circumstance that could come up, what would be the right thing to do? And you know, what would the ideal right person do in this situation? So you're kind of using your imagination at this point. You're not just following from someone else or looking at very simply your self-interest. You are creatively thinking about what the best thing to do is. So if, if you have this social contract, what would this guy do if he was on level five? The reason that he would steal the drugs for a social contract reason is because he would believe in uh, it, that his wife has a right to life. Um, he thinks that's part of the social contract that should be upheld, is that his wife should be able to live at any cost. So you know the cost being $17,000, he's okay with that if the social contract, if he's thinking of a social contract, but he's, if he's going to end up not stealing the drugs, then the reasoning, according to social contract, would be, if I steal it, then someone else doesn't get the drugs. Maybe they need it more than I do. Maybe they'd be more desperate and they would steal the drugs. Um, he's trying to think um, of other people's situations. He's trying to think, um, you know, my wife's kind of old. She might not have the best years ahead of her. Maybe the disease has c gone too far, and there's no hope, even if she does get the drug. Um, he would he would rationalize it the other way. Now we're looking at number six, the final stage, according to Kohlberg, and this one's a little longer to write. Universal ethical principles. Ethical. So you're looking at the ethics of everything and principles. Principles don't usually change very much. They're pretty much set in stone. So if you have these universal, that means it's not just applied to me. It's not in my self-interest. Everyone should have this. It doesn't exist because of the law. It's universal. That means it's just part of the universe and that everyone should follow these. Ethical, that's the entire thing we're talking about is ethics and principles mean that they shouldn't change. So like I said before on number five, the right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, these are all, at least in our, in our American culture, universal ethical principles, is as much of a contradiction as that may be, saying universal for America. But that's what we consider to be universal. That's what we, that's what our ethos says is a universal ethical principle. So if he believes that his wife has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness at the cost of anything else, then he will steal the drugs for her, similar to number five. And if he believes that theft is against a universal ethical principle, I, I can't quite think of a way to rationalize this in the other direction for not stealing the drugs. Um, I, you know, m most of these ethical principles really revolve around freedom. 
um, and obviously life. So unless he's thinking that this guy has a has a universal ethical right to keep his property, maybe um, this one's a little hard to rationalize in the other direction. But you know, the the stage six is the final stage, the most mature stage on here, and so these are the Martin Luther King Juniors of the world, the Mahatma Gandhis of the world that get down to here, and that's why it's post-conventional. It's above the regular morality.